150 is a request for a two-foot variance from the Manfred Park Neighborhood Conservation District design requirement of a 10-foot building separation to allow two structures to be eight feet apart. Applicant Imagine Hills Homes LTD property address 329 Claremont Avenue, sounding MF33 and CD6 multifamily Manfred Park Neighborhood Conservation District. Here is the location map. The applicant is building a single family home on the subject property and is seeking a variance to allow the house to be eight foot from the adjacent home. The subject property is located within the Monkey Park Neighborhood Conservation District, which requires 10 feet of building separation between structures. The applicant states that the previous structure was demolished due to deteriorating conditions with the intent of constructing a new home. Uh, in its five feet away from the west property line. While the property is proposed to be five feet away from the west property line, which means to say that the non-conforming neighborhood, neighboring property on the west is only three feet away from the property line, forcing a seven-foot setback from the subject property. Here is the site plan. We will be looking at the west part of it. Um, Here is the subject property. Subject property and neighboring project. Neighboring project. Neighboring project setbacks. Claremont Streetscape to the west. Claremont Streetscape to the east. <laughs> Staff recommends denial of the variance in A18-150 based on the following findings of fact. The variance is contrary to the public interest in that it may detract from the character of the community. Mail 30 notices and the subject property is located within the boundaries of Matthew Park Neighborhood Association. Five in favor, one in opposition, Matthew Park Neighborhood Association is in opposition. Here is the notification plan. Questions? Yeah, right, and Drive in that neighborhood for a long time, and it seems like these kind of houses are popping in all over the place there. So I'm just kind of wondering why the denial, what's the justification? It does seem like that same type of house is in keeping with what they're doing. So just give me a little bit more information. So if I can chime in a little bit. Okay. Um, so the Neighborhood Conservation District Standards um, is a process in which um, the uh, property owners within the neighborhood who are working to create an NCD work with city staff on creating those uh, standards. Uh, so when this one was adopted, um, it was um, it, it's sort of like a joint venture, if you will. And so our job as a city is to um, uphold those standards, enforce those standards, um, and only when there are uh, huge conflicts or um, legal aspects, if you will, would we or that the design would meet the intent and spirit, do we change our recommendation? Um, in this case, just to give you a brief background, there were a couple of NCDs that we have worked with the neighborhoods on in the last year to update, to address some uh, loopholes and inconsistencies and help uh, provide clarification. Maggie Park is the third one that we are currently working on. Um, and so this is one of the standards that we had started to talk about and discuss with the task force, letting them know of the uh, potential to be punitive to a property owner where there is on either side of that property non-conforming structures. Uh, so uh, we tabled it um, from a proposed revision language to it, and we hope to address it at the next meeting. We've been meeting monthly with this task force that is made up of uh, property owners within the Mankey Park neighborhood, but we haven't finished the discussion on that. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a, be a brief background, but this is one of the standards that is currently under review. So would this be premature to hear this case? No, I mean, the standard is still in place today, um, and the developer has a, a time clock that he needs to move forward with, and so that's why he has to bring the variance. Okay, so essentially what they've done is they've polished one home. Are they planning on building two homes on the same lot? So the developer's here to help answer that, too. Okay, and the plan that, that you're discussing that this 
investigation and cooperation. Are you giving us any indication by this denial of what is expected to occur? So in the staff report, we put that, again, we tabled it. So in other words, when we got to this, there wasn't a consensus to keep the language as is. There was a consensus to come back and revisit it to, to address the fact that there are non-conforming structures on either side of a property owner's lot. Thank you. Go ahead. So a couple questions. Uh, this The NCD came out in 2009, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, is it common for this neighborhood to have homes three feet off, or does this happen to be an outlier? Yes. No, it is common to have uh, properties within this neighborhood three feet off because, again, they were built when site setbacks were about three feet. And so the 25 foot, this is only a 25 foot wide lot leaving him. He would have to build a house that was 13 feet wide for him to make this a complaint. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Go ahead. Just to make sure I'm clear, so the neighboring house is less than the five-foot side setback? That is correct. But it doesn't appear to be a old house from previous codes or prior to the five-foot setback code. Is that a, is it a new home? Uh, no, so I think if you go to the pictures, show the one that is... It's that one on the... If you're looking at it, it's on, it's on the west side, the left side. Okay, so the large green home is the existing home that is... That is not conforming, I correct. I was looking at the right side, and that was my confusion. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Roger. Sure. I would say that I believe that site was where the Borkham house set, and they tore that down. Why did the mountain mountain South Dakota? Interesting. Thank you. Any other questions? Stop. Okay, thank you. Would the applicant come forward, please? <clears throat> Sir, for the record, we need your name and address and the reason why you're requesting this. Good afternoon. My name is John Friesenhaal with Imagine Homes. Address 11467, Keep Your Road, Suite 225, 7230. Uh, we're here today to ask for a two-foot variance from the Mankey Park in CD section 3.1.1, which required the 10-foot separation. And the request is due to the non-conforming setback on the house to our the left of our property here. I've got a few slides I'd like to like to show you in uh, as part of my presentation here. So the the lot in yellow there is lot 44 from the original 1927 Adam Terrace plat. Uh, the property has not been replatted or modified over the years since the original plat. And over the uh, last two years, Imagine Homes has pulled 36 permits within this particular NCD, and we have not seen this here before because we understood the rules and worked to strictly stay within those rules and not have to come kind of ask for variances in the, in the projects that we're working on. So, what I've got here is a, an aerial showing the house that was in existence, and it actually was built right up to within a foot of the property line. So there was four feet of separation between, uh, this is the, the greenhouse that's existing that's not conforming at approximately three feet off the property line. And this is the house that was taken down. Uh, you can see here that it was set rather low and the, the lot slopes from the rear towards the street. And so there were drainage, drainage issues along the back of the house. But really the house was functionally obsolete. It was, if that house were to be updated, it would require new wiring, new plumbing. We brought up to the current energy codes and we need to have the central heating there to make it marketable to today's home buyers. In doing all that, we would have had a full building permit because we would have exceeded 50% of the value of the home, which would have brought us right back here to ask for a variance to the same standard anyway. As part of the review, we would have been denied the permit because of the size setback here not giving the 10 foot separation. And the red line there, a little different angle showing where the 
existing house was. Now, because with the new property we propose here with a five foot conforming side setback, it'll give eight feet between the two buildings. But because that existing property owner is three feet off, we've worked out an agreement with that owner to provide them an access easement to maintain and uh, facilitate the maintenance and the access along that, as well as an agreement to not place any kind of fence uh, so that it would leave clear access there. Any kind of fence would be pushed back beyond, beyond the rear of, of the existing home there to our left. Uh, now, there's, there's no commentary in the NCD as to the purpose of the 10-foot separation, but the diagram seems to uh, indicate that the 10 feet was based on the minimum size setback of 5 feet on two conforming properties. And so, we felt it's unfair to penalize the property owner because of a non-conforming issue next door by incurring a different an increased uh, setback. The, um, you know, furthermore, on a 25-foot lot, if we were forced to have 12 feet of side setback, it reduces us to a 13-foot footprint. And we would, again, if we tried to incorporate that into a single-family residence, we'd be back here asking for different variances to the NCD for glazing requirements, uh, front door facing the street. There's, there's numerous other things that we could not meet with that footprint. Now, the neighborhood, it's a very unique and diverse neighborhood, particularly south of the park. There's a mixture of single family, duplexes, triplexes, uh, fourplexes, apartments, and you see separations of all kinds. And so I've just taken a sampling here of a few streets around us to show that we there are houses with much less than 10 feet separation. Here's one on Natalin, which is one street to the south. I've got two that I'll show you here on Queen Anne Court, which are a couple of streets to the north. Another one here with middle. This is just a sampling here of, of what we've seen. So what, what I'm here today to ask you for is this, this two foot variance to allow us to build it on the five feet off of the property line in conforming standard. Variants will not be contrary to the public interest because the proposed new home will actually increase what was there at four feet to now being an eight foot separation between buildings. The location meets the NF, NF 33 requirements for a five foot side setback. The, if the purpose was for maintenance for that 10 foot separation, we've addressed that by granting the property owner to the left a maintenance easement. And the, uh, you know, the tell safety about uh, fire separation, we've actually are going to increase that separation from four feet to now being eight foot separation between the buildings. Um, again, the, it will not, uh, the spirit of the ordinance uh, would not, I'm sorry, it will not, uh, the little enforcement would not result in unnecessary hardship. Uh, we did not create this. Did not create this uh, condition. Uh, it was created due to the non-conforming uh, status of the property next door, and um, the strict enforcement of the ten-foot separation would make the lot unbuildable. And then, finally, the variance um, is not a. Are you able to create a minimally habitable residence, but? residential property owners entitled to the use of their property to the fullest as it relates to a family home or a place of family recreation. Now by granting this variance, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed. We say that there's no commentary in the NCD as to the purpose of the separation. The variance uh, will provide an eight-foot separation between the homes, which is sufficient for access and maintenance. And as I've shown with a few sampling examples, it's not out of character of other properties you see within the neighborhood. The, uh, the variance will not authorize the operation of use other than specifically permitted. Uh, 
in that 33 is the zoning. It was previously single family. It will again be single family that's authorized within the district. And um, there's a minimum five foot side set back in MS 33. The adjacent property uh, owner will not be uh, injured uh, since the setback will be greater than what it was prior to the demolition of the existing structure. Uh, there's several structures within the neighborhood that are less than 10 feet of separation, so I can't, I wouldn't see that it's a strict 10 foot separation with the character of the neighborhood. And uh, we've provided a maintenance easement next door, and um, there will be a 10 foot separation with the property located to the right of the proposed structure. And then finally, the circumstances were not created uh, by the owner, but as a result of the non-conforming status of the, the property next door. Thank you for your time, and we have to answer any questions. Thank you. Welcome, Martinez. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my previous question I asked, and uh, judging by the plans that I see here, you're playing with a few structures on the original lot? No, sir, there were, there were two and a half Platted lots there. So we are building one structure on platted lot number 44 from the Madeline Terrace plat. But there was a single structure on both those properties? There was a single structure on the two and a half lots, but we are not able to obtain a certificate of termination to build over the lot line for the. If we were to try to build on lots 44 and 45, we could not pull a building permit because we cannot meet all the standards of the certificate of determination to build a single family residence over a lot line. So your choice was to stay with what you had and, and try to build two separate structures? Correct. All right, thank you. Go ahead. It is not imagined uh, a build San Antonio Green builder. Yes, these these homes are energy star in the Sunshine and Green. And have now you have had your firm won awards from the City of San Antonio to the San Antonio Green. I, I'm gonna stop it there. I'm gonna look at approve you for questions. Uh, first time up here, Chairman and I apologize. That's all right. Any other questions? For you? Go ahead. Uh, did you reach out to the uh, Nikki Park Association? We sent them the information. We have met in the past with the Neighborhood Association and their Land Use Committee. Um, in this case, there's really, there's no room for a compromise here. If we, if we, if we increase the setback, we're left with an unbuildable site. Yeah, but you did go meet with their, with their We have in the past, well, to inform them of our, our plans for the neighborhood. And we're also participating on the task force for this NCD rewrite, so I've been involved in that over the last year. Because uh, they, they, in the file, they had written uh, an opposition. I don't know if you wanted to speak on any of their points. Um, it's, we, we, I mean, you can term it a loophole if you'd like, but we understand the rules of the NCD and their specific requirements, very strict requirements in this NCD. Every structure that we've built in the neighborhood meets standards of the NCD. If we haven't had to come here for a variance. We have, we've sat down, we've talked, and you know, we've. I, I feel like we've cleaned up a lot of, I'd say over half the structures that we have taken down have been vacant or uninhabited for some period of time. Most of them have not conformed with all the standards of the NCD. And they, uh, some of them looked like uh, Sanford and Son. You know, they were just, we hauled all kinds of stuff out of there. So, uh, you know, if you talk to the police department or code enforcement or the school district, uh, the, I think their calls for drugs and prostitution and issues have, have, have reduced some by, by what we've been able to clean up on the street. I know the Neighborhood Association doesn't like what we're doing, and so I don't know that we'll ever find common ground. All right, thank you. Anyone else? 
I have a question for staff. Staff, so the house that he refers to that is non-conforming, at what point was that classified non-conforming? It couldn't have been originally because the houses were so close together. When the Unified Development Code was adopted in 2001 with a five-foot side setback, that house became non-conforming. So it's not conforming in two ways, both to the Unified Development Code for a five-foot setback, um, and then it's possibly, a, if, the, if the current structure was still there, it would have been non-conforming to the NCD because it, met, it didn't meet the 10-foot building separation either. So once he knocked down the other house, anything that goes in place has to conform? Correct. Okay. But he's still trying to get a little bit more space in between the non-conforming house and what he's uh, trying to build. That's what it sounds like, four feet extra. From what was there, right? Correct. Okay. Mr. Martinez, go ahead. Well, my understanding is that there was a 10-foot requirement for the new standard. And because the house that's existing is only three feet from the property line, meant that he could not build at his normal five-foot position because that would make it too close to the adjacent property. So essentially, if that house didn't exist, he wouldn't be needing to come here to Correct. Correct. If that adjacent uh, structure was not there, then um, he just needs to meet the five foot setback. Exactly. So there was two ways to approach this problem: buy the property next door, tear it down, rebuild something else, or replant the other two properties into one and try to build something there. Otherwise, he would try to be trying to buy to build a rifle and still shut that down. Replanting would still have to meet the minimum replant requirements of a fifty foot lot. It would still require a seven foot side setback. Any other questions? I take it we have people to speak. Let me take a seat for right now, sir, please. The first is Charlotte and Lucas. Ben, you may adjust that microphone. We need your name and address for the record, please. My name is Charlotte Ann Lucas. Um, I live at 434 Funston Place in Yankee Park. Go ahead. My husband and I um, have fairly deep roots here. Almost exactly 100 years ago, my grandfather was awarded his wings as a U.S. Army pilot at Fort Sam Houston, just blocks from where we live. My husband's mother and the late Congressman Henry D. Gonzalez both attended Jefferson High School together. In a city that shamefully ranks among the worst in the nation for economic segregation, Mankey Park is a sparkling exception, as noted by Dr. Christine Drennan, of Trinity University's uh, Urban Studies Director, in her presentation to the Mayor's Housing Policy Task Force. In contrast to the 1920s era bungalows, the area south of the park has always had multifamily homes where military families once lived right off base. Most recently, those two plexes, four plexes, and eight plexes on Clarence Street and Madeline Street offered affordable homes for people with very limited means. People who could afford people who could afford to live there included a cellist in the San Antonio Symphony and not paid very much. A single man raising three of his grandchildren who were able to beat the odds of poverty because they lived, could walk to Lamar Elementary, one of the best elementary schools in the city. Mankey Park has its neighborhood conservation district designed to protect and strengthen desirable and unique features of the area. Before you consider what may on its face appear to be a very minor variance request, it's important to consider the character of the applicant inspire homes. When, I'm sorry, when, when they came to our neighborhood, Imagine Homes began by exploiting loopholes to get around the spirit of the Neighborhood Conservation District, which requires that lots are a minimum of 50 feet wide. Then they commenced to systematically flaunt all manner of rules and regulations, assaulting the sensibilities and well-being of people who live here. Those most affected were not people like me. They were people of color, people in poverty, people whose first language is not English. Those are the fewest resources or ability to hold the developer accountable or to seek relief. One by one, house by house, renters were pushed out of their homes, displaced as they systematically bulldozed duplexes, fourplexes, eightplexes, and some affordable family homes. 30 seconds. 
I have a video, and I believe my husband is here with me this time. What was his name? Bill Walden. He is signed in. May I continue, ma'am? Yes. Since we don't have audio, you want to narrate it? Okay, these are the skinny homes, um, or shotgun shacks, as that they used to be known, that are proliferating, and that's the area in question where one home came down and the developer wants to build three of those skinny homes. The homogeneity is clear violation of the spirit of the Neighborhood Conservation District. And here's how those homes have come down. Thanksgiving morning, as you can see in this video, a handful of workers began tearing off asbestos shingles from one of those fourplexes with no protection for any of the neighbors. And according to the state, which regulates asbestos abatement, they opened an investigation based on this video. The people doing this told me they had done it in many instances in Mankey Park, including the property, two properties directly behind our home. There was no protection for the neighbors, and the best that we know, no mitigation for the asbestos that came down. What you can't see there is the permit on the demolition of that same property that required a six foot fence. And that is the property that included several families, including one man who was raising his three grandsons. At 10 o'clock at night, workers are still at work on these places, creating all manner of noise. We call 311, 311 does not respond. You can't hear the audio on this, obviously from a block away. It got my attention and we put cameras on it. We've gotten no response from the developer of these things. That's 10 o'clock at night. At 4.15 one morning, the neighbors got woken up by eight cement trucks coming in across the street from the property in question. Those cement trucks actually blocked a person from being able to get out of her home and take her child to school. When you grant a variance, grant it to someone who has been a good citizen of the neighborhood. There's what it used to look like. That was a distance. Okay, ma'am, can you wrap up a little bit? Um, the last thing I have to say has to do with the impervious cover. This project of three homes, well, will increase the impervious cover on this property by 58%. The people downhill will know that there's been a change on the storm, storm cover. This is one of the other ones where there was a non-conforming. He never came to you guys, but that's less than 10 feet. Okay, before you go, hang on. Is everything in that video dealing directly with, you mentioned, still false? Yes. There's no other developer than no. how. So this is no, her it's take all, on the It's all those. It's all him. Okay. Any other questions for the witness? Mr. Knapp. You mentioned earlier on that one of the loopholes, Imagine Home says, exercise is a 25 foot lot instead of a 50 foot lot. Could you 
explain to me what the 55 I, I, I don't personally understand all the details of it because I'm not part of the, the Neighborhood Association leadership, but they wrote about it in the newsletter and said that these things are origi were originally platted at 25 feet, and so therefore, if he wants to, when he buys a lot like this, it's very easy for him to put up three shotgun houses as opposed to as opposed to go to the effort of putting something on there that would be more in conforming with the neighborhood. So the Neighborhood Association understands that better than I do. I'm, I'm, this is an unusual position for me to be in. I'm a journalist. I'm used to being on the other side of the camera on this. So it's, it's difficult for me. But what's, what's happened with these things, obviously, also is that they're not affordable. They're $378,000 a piece. So it's increasing economic segregation in the city. Thank you. Oh, can I turn to Kat or Logan to answer that question for me, perhaps? Was there is there no requirement that a lot be 50 feet minimum? There's no requirement at all for lot widths, perhaps? Uh, only when they're replatting. So uh, when the code, when the NCD was um, was developed, uh, there was a look at what the current state of the plat was. What happened is that many, uh, much of this sub subdivision in Mackey Park was platted originally with 25 foot width lots. What happened was that owners um, owned several lots and built across the lot lines, which you can do with a single family home, but you have to own the whole entire lot in order to build across those lot lines. Um, and what has happened is that people have sold off pieces, half lots of a lot, um, as well as a full lot, and uh, sold off over the years. But it was originally platted with 25 foot width lots. The code was developed with the language that acknowledged that there were lots built um, with only minimum widths of 25 feet. So the code was written to say if somebody wanted to replat property, the minimum width had to be 50 feet. There was no maximum width given to prevent McMansions, but there was only a minimum width given. They, so some, if someone wants to build on a, uh, on a 25 foot width lot, they don't have to replat. That it is already platted as 25 feet width with a 25 foot width lot. So they can proceed directly to the building permit stage and build a home. Again, it only comes in when you are replatting the property. But again, there's many uh, parts of the code that exempt properties from complying with certain provisions, such as a detached garage, because there's no way to fit a detached garage on a 25-foot width lot. So when, again, when the NCD was adopted, it recognized that the plat was in existence, and it only addresses when properties are being platted. So I can assume that the Neighborhood Association may feel it's a loophole because there was an assumption that lots were 50 feet because a home was built on two lots. And so in the NCD, perhaps it didn't identify that in any way, and that may be where this is coming from. Right. So again, a lot of those homes were built across lot lines. But again, you have those provisions in the code to um, help prevent undevelopable property. We, the city doesn't want to be in a position of creating undevelopable circumstances. Thank you. Any other questions? Do we have any other speakers? Thank you, ma'am. Do you have one more? Lori Sherwood? For the record, we need your name and address, please. Lori Sherwood, 303 Elmo. Okay. There's a lot of bad blood on the bridge, obviously. Those shotgun houses were not at all what we considered to be appropriate. And the loophole was, because it was an arrow lot, they could put the garage door up front. Because that's what we didn't want to see, because our neighborhood basically didn't have that. And now with the over 40 new buildings on the street, most of them have that front of the rock. And the problem I have with it is instead of taking up the front part of that lot with one big building that houses a lot of families, we're running them all like this. There's hardly any land there. I live at the bottom of the hill. I know I am going to flood eventually once all this is done, because there's nowhere for the water to go. And the city has failed in their job to look at that. Had this been one lump size piece of land, the developer would have had to deal with that and, and 
say, yeah, this is what we're going to do for water mitigation, blah, blah, blah. But, but because it's single lot, he doesn't have to do that. And the city's not going to do anything about it, even though it's five foot all the way around the house, there's, there's land. That's nothing compared to what was there. You, are, you heard the lady Corsi, 58% more land is covered. And it's covered with buildings. One of the things with the NCD that they were trying to do with the houses was to keep them farther apart so there was a driveway to go back to put a garage in the back. We didn't have garages up the front. And basically the street is ruined because there's no parking there now. There's no place for garbage cans. And the people who are buying houses, they're happy. But they have displaced other families. There's no more people there now. There's more cars there now. But there's people who have needs. I have needs, but I couldn't afford to buy one of those houses if I wanted to. And I live two streets away. I I understand where he's at. Hey, I'm gonna problem. I'm gonna create a bigger space between them. But he's gonna take up all of that land there. If you look at that picture and the buildings next to him, that wasn't covered. Now it's all covered. And unfortunately, they would have to suffer in one of their 50 or so properties and sell that piece of land, maybe with a house next to it that's 25 feet. I don't know. But it's sending a message that, hey, yes, we do care about what's going on, and the, the flooding is an issue. That's, that's all I can say. 30 seconds. That's all I can say. Okay. And do we have questions? Mr. Depp. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Depp has a question. Oh, sorry, Mr. Depp. I have a question a lot like for the last speaker. Um, you mentioned that your NCD didn't intend to have front-facing garages, and it was the neighborhood's intent to be able to have the 10 feet to get a driveway to park in the rear. Could you inform me better on how that came to be, that this loophole has been exercised 40-something times? Well, when Imagine Homes came to the neighborhood, they basically came and did whatever they wanted to because they figured out that there's a flat they did from the 20s that nobody knew about was 25 foot wide lots. When we were doing the NCD in 2008, there was no mention of, oh, by the way, that land in the south of the park is almost all 25 foot lots. No, nobody knew. And then Imagine Camp Pumps came in, they bought some buildings, tore them down, and started, we're like, what the hell is going on? Da, da, da. And we figured it out. There's a flat. He owns the property. He can put a 25 foot, he can build on that 25 foot wide property. And in the NCD, there was a thing of, well, if it's less than 45 feet wide, we understand you can have a front loaded garage. That's how that happened. I understand. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? And thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? That is all. You may come up, sir. You heard uh, some of the comments, some of the questions, uh, your closing remarks. Yes. I, change is difficult. Uh, we, we were definitely working on, on tight sides on an inhabited infill street. We, we're, we're doing our best to apply, comply with trying not to disrupt the neighbors. Um, the reality is, the pictures you saw of concrete being finished into the night, it's, as we get hot days, it, it extends and they can't just stop and pick up the next morning, they've got to finish. That's happened on, on one occasion there that I, that I know of. I, I don't know that we've been there uh, late on multiple occasions. Um, I know some of the other complaints we received were um, we had crews after hours, once trucks got on the street, we had equipment running up and down the street to clean clean the street. That We had to get the cars out of the way in order to do that. We, we're trying to be good neighbors, but at the bottom, at the end of the day, it's, the neighborhood isn't happy with what we're building. We're, we're trying to play. We're here today on one specific case on lot 44 dealing with a non-conforming house next door. It's 
10 foot. It's, and it's not an issue of can we replat into a 50 foot lot. We've got building permits and houses under construction on the other lots. Um, I just want to touch on the question you had to Catherine about the replatting of the lot size. But I was saying we could not get a certificate of termination to build over. You can build over, over a single family, a single family home over a lot line under certain conditions. And one of those is it had to be in that original configuration on a specific date, 2005. I'm not sure exactly what the significance of that date is, but that's the criteria that we cannot meet in most cases because a lot of these houses are sitting on one full platted lot in two portions, or two full lots in one portion. And so unless you're building one house on that full lot width, it, you, you can't you can't meet that, that requirement. So in this case, if we were to try to come back and build a 50 foot wide house, because this was a two and a portion of a lot, we could not get a building permit without replatting the entire site. But that gets off into a different subject as to what we're here for on this, this setback here. You know, a lot of the displacement is not because we're out soliciting, but we've got a lot, there's a lot of um, Claremont and Natalie in these two streets particularly, there's a lot of out-of-town owners who are not investing any money back in these properties, and they, they're in poor shape, a lot of them are. And with, I mean, you had a case earlier for the Broadway development. Everybody knows what's happening on Broadway as a result of the Pearl District. And that is driving property taxes up, and it's driving demand for people to be in the area. That's what's pushing people out. We're not out knocking on doors. We're getting phone calls with people that are getting, you know, five hundred dollar a month rents for these duplexes, and their property taxes are six and eight thousand dollars a year. They just—it's not economically feasible. And if they wanted to invest money back into these properties, they got to meet all these NCD standards that a lot of these old duplex buildings cannot meet. Parking requirements glazing requirements, front door placement, there's a number of things that, that it just makes it not feasible to, to rehab these properties. And then just finally to address this, this loophole, there's an exception written into the NCD that exempts 45 foot wide or less or 110 feet deep or less lots from the rear parking requirement. And that was specifically, I only guess, put in there because of the realization that with a shallow lot or a narrow lot, you cannot rely on rear parking. Therefore, in this case, we're asking for your consideration for the two-foot variance. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. So uh, we heard a uh, testimony that you're uh, increasing the amount of impervious cover and drainage downstream. As part of this development, did you do a uh, stormwater management report that look to see how the effects of this development is with the, with the 2,000 foot study. I'm sorry, there, these are one-off in sale properties that have taken place over time, so that has not been a requirement since we have not gone through a platting process. We have replatted, we have done amending plats on a few properties to allow us to build duplexes. And as part of that, there is a drainage study done. Well, some, some, they're also required to building permitting in some instances. I was just curious to know if that had ever been done. This is not the impact. It's not the mass. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. I just like to say, I don't consider those infill. Infill is the lot is vacant, and you find a house somewhere to put it on it. It's well, the number of the first five, I'm sorry, the first five that we did build were on vacant lots. There are some that were on vacant lots. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Um, no one's close to the meeting. They're close to the public at this point. So, at this time, I need a board member to make a motion. Mr. Neff? Regarding appeal number A18150, a request for a two foot variance from the Mankin Park Neighborhood Conservation District design requirement of a 10 foot building separation to allow two structures to be eight feet apart, situated at 329 Claremont Avenue, applicant being Imagine Built Homes LTD. 
I move to the Board of Adjustment to grant the applicant's request for the variances to the subject property as described above. Does the testimony presented to us and the facts that we have determined show that the physical character of this property is such that a literal enforcement of the provisions of the Unified Development Code as amended would result in an unnecessary hardship? Specifically, we find that the variance is not contrary to the public interest. The public interest is defined as the general health, safety, and welfare of the public. In this case, the public interest is represented by minimum setbacks that help to establish uniform and safe development within the city of San Antonio. The proposed structure meets the five-foot side property requirement. Staff finds the request is not contrary to the public interest and that the requested setback maintains what used to be prior to demolition and is similar to other setbacks within the community. Due to special conditions, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. A literal enforcement of the ordinance would result in the applicant not being able to build as proposed. By granting the variance, the spirit of the ordinance will be observed and substantial justice will be done. The spirit of the ordinance is the intent of the code, rather than the strict letter of the law. In this case, the intent of the setback is to allow room for maintenance and to provide safe separation. A five-foot side setback would satisfy this intent. The spirit of the ordinance is further observed and the structure meets all other setbacks. The variance will not authorize the operation of a use other than those uses specifically authorized. The requested variances will not authorize the operation of a use on the subject property other than those specifically permitted in the MF33 NCD6 multifamily Mackey Park Neighborhood Conservation District. Such variance will not substantially injure the appropriate use of adjacent conforming property or alter the essential character of the district in which the property is located. There are several properties within the community that benefit from reduced size setbacks. The request would not be out of character of the district. Applied to the owner of the property for which the variance is sought is due to unique circumstances existing on the property. And unique circumstances were not created by the owner of the property and are not merely financial and are not due to or the result of general conditions in the district in which the property is located. Applied to the owner for which the variance is sought is due to the previous location of the main building in relation to the adjacent property to the west. In a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Neff, any comments? Yes, I'm very familiar with properties being redeveloped and the certificate of determination process and infill development and seeing a lot of it in many neighborhoods uh, within these two miles of downtown. I was asking the specific questions about the NCD because I'm not as familiar with the exact ins and outs of what were called loopholes in this meeting. Um, I'm in favor of infill development. I think it is good to take advantage of empty lots that have just been sitting empty for years so that we can provide more housing for our communities and even the insurgents of new members of our communities. However, I think in cases like this, you have an opportunity to do everything per codes and per ordinances and per conservation district requirements because you're building from new. You're not dealing with something that you're rehabbing that's 80 years old and was built according to an older code. So uh, I disagree with the motion I just read I do think that health, safety, and welfare are important considerations that we should make uh, as we're developing our inner city or any part of our city and as we sit on this board. I believe that reducing that 10 foot requirement when otherwise it would not need to be in a new construction situation uh, does not warrant uh, me granting approval of this variance today. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. This is an actual, to me, a very unusual circumstance because, generally speaking, only considering the property that's there, one would assume that you could go within the standard construction limits, five foot setbacks, and comply. But this particular issue has more to do with an overall neighborhood development and has very little to do with the specific property in general. Uh, judging by the uh, association, not approving this project 
and uh, the fact that the city staff is recommending denial, <clears throat> I also will not be voting for this, for this motion. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Rogers. Oh, okay, Hector, take the vote. Mr. Nair. I do not concur with the findings of that. Mr. Martinez. I do not concur. Mr. Keel. Yes, I concur with the findings of fact. Dr. Zorro. I do not concur with the findings of fact. Ms. Rogers. I do not concur with the findings of fact. Mr. Brigham. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. No, I do not concur. Mr. Orion. Yes. Ms. Bradman. Yes. Mr. Shaw. Yes. And Mr. Cooter. I do not concur. So it's five in favor, six opposed. Unfortunately, it does not carry. Get together with staff and see what your options are. Next case.